All right, we'll get started here. Again, I want to welcome everybody. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, appreciate you uh, uh, tuning in and having an interest in what we're going to do today. All right, so today I'm going to try to be a little more brief than I was um, on Tuesday. I think I went an hour Tuesday. I'm going to try to get through this in about 30 minutes a day, if that's possible. And so, again, appreciate you tuning in and and and, uh, and listening and and. Uh, you know, wanting to learn and talk some football. And um, feel free to shoot me some questions. I'll answer them at the end, do, do the best I can to answer them. The one thing I was going to talk today about is uh, is mesh route, okay, which to me I think is when you go and you go back and you look at that stuff that we've done through the years, it's probably as uh, – it's probably been one of the biggest routes that we've run through the years, um, you know, when I first got exposed to this, to the air raid style of offense was in 1997. I went as a graduate assistant to, to the University of Kentucky. And Mesh was something that, that Hal Mummy was the head coach here and Mike Leach was the offensive coordinator. Mesh was something that, you know, they'd just been doing for a long time. It was something that Hal had learned uh, from BYU, you know, the old BYU passing game, five-step stuff, and it's something that, that – you know, we just believed in and something that we did a lot of. So what I'll do is I'll take you through a little bit of kind of some of the teaching progression of the play, and then I'll talk to you a little bit about the drill, some of the drills that we do to, to, to improve the play. Um, let me just say this. I do believe that, you know, you're either a team that runs mesh or you're a team that doesn't. Uh, and what I mean by that is, it, you know, you have to major in it. You really do. I mean, it's something that, that takes a lot of reps. It's something that uh, is very versatile. What I like about it is it allows you to throw the ball to your running backs if you have good backs. It allows you to, you know, to, to beat man coverage. You know, it's a great route versus man. I've always felt like it's an even better route versus zone. Um, and you can do a lot of different things and, and build some things into it to build around the strengths of your quarterback. Um, and so I'm going to talk you through a couple of, 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 of just the basic play, what we do, how we do it, and then uh, some of the teaching points in it, okay? All right, so what I'm going to start with here is just uh, – and what I'll do is I'll draw it up as a true tight end and two backs in the backfield. Okay, so this is a base formation for us here, Okay. The one thing that we have, have always done that I liked about this play was we had one guy that always set the mesh, okay? And the, the one that sets the mesh for us is your Y. And I've always believed that you're going to be a lot better at this play if you have only one player that sets the mesh because there is a an art to setting the mesh, okay? So what we tell the Y receiver is this. You're going to take an inside release. And then you're going to try to go five yards up the field over the ball. Okay. And you're going to be underneath any kind of linebackers. All right. What we tell the X receiver is you want to get a split. It's seven yards from the tackle. Okay. Seven yards from the tackle. Your job is to get underneath the Y that set the mesh. Okay. So if the mesh, if the, if the Y is seven yards down the field, your job's to get six and a half yards. If the Y is three yards down the field, your job is to get two and a half yards. Okay. And that's the, that's the, 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 the principle there. So then what we do when we introduce the route, we have the X and the Y, we have these guys as they come through, they slap hands. Okay. They'll slap hands. And then we tell them the Y to look at the defender covering the X as he's setting the mesh, then he'll know is a man or zone coverage. We'll tell him settle versus zone. Okay. Continue on the run versus man. Okay. And then I'll get into some of the little nuances off of that in a second. And then I'll talk to you about the quarterback progression. What we do on the outside here is this is our first read. Okay. And what we do is we call this a corner route. Now it doesn't really look like a corner route. We call it a corner route. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to outside release. We're trying to get 12 yards up the field. All right. And then we're trying to stick our toe on the ground and run basically an out. Okay. 
but we call it a corner now that's a so if it's a it's a cover two look here all right the route will look more like this okay if it's off or off coverage or free access all right the route will look more like i just described it can look more like this okay and that's an out that's the first read for a quarterback okay quarterback's going to take the snap out of the gun he's going to drop three steps all right that's a pre-snap read he's going to peek at this number one he's going to have a pretty good idea if he's going to throw it or not then he's going to progress to the mesh okay he will read the entire mesh here all right so his eyes will go here to here all right then what we do with the backs is we usually run a shoot route here and a swing route here okay so typically what we'll do is we'll get a read where the quarterback reads the front side first he likes this his eyes come over here he starts with this he doesn't like that then basically now he's going to read the mesh to the swing route on the on the front side okay that's a front side read all right if he doesn't like the look pre-snap he doesn't like the corner route his eyes go here doesn't look good now he works this progression he comes over here and reads the back side Okay, and he'll read mesh to shoot. Okay, and so that's that's our progression. All right, as is all of our five step passing game is. It's a, it's a it's a read. It's a progression read, um, and it's a it's a five read progression. This is a little different. You know, historically we're not going to have time to read all this front side out and then shift to the back side. So it's going to be again front side read. I don't like the front side. My eyes don't like this throw. They come here. I want to get to the other side of the mesh, and then I go a quick three, quick four, and we move on down the road. Okay, that is base mesh. Okay, so let me let me get this erased. I'll talk to you about some of the nuances within this. Okay, remember the Y is going to set the mesh underneath the linebackers in a perfect world. It'll be five or six yards deep. All right, you get in this formation here. Okay, that's our formation here. Or if you get into trips here, it doesn't really affect anything on the route. Okay, that's what I like about this. It's always your, your read progression. All right, so if we call mesh here, okay, we call this 92. All right, if we run 92, it's going to be this. everybody runs the same route. Okay, he's got his corner out. He's got his mesh. He's got his mesh. He's got his shoot. He's got his swing. Okay, the read progression is going to be the same. Corner out, number one. Mesh here. Okay. So it would be three, four. And again, kind of split the field in half. Okay, so we've got this read here to mesh, to shoot. Okay, or if he doesn't like this front side here, he gets to the back side, he'll read here to here. Okay, now getting into some of the routes a little bit, what we're telling our, our, our H and our F both are this. You know, this is a six man protection we're in. F has to check release. So his job is to check release, and then his job is to swing and stretch to the bottom of the numbers. Okay, very, very important that he stretches to the bottom of the numbers, okay, because what that's going to do, that's going to stretch this defender, whatever, whoever that is, it's a corner, a linebacker, a safety, whoever that defender is to his side, that defender needs to get stretched horizontally, okay? And you've heard this old stuff, you end up with, with triangles here. Okay, you end up with a front side triangle, all right? A high, low, vertical, and horizontal stretch, all right? And that's the way you want a lot of the, the, your pass plays to, to the look, is that type of, of triangle, high, low, vertical, vertical, horizontal stretch, okay? All right, so that's, that's that. So the shoot's the same thing we tell the shoot is you're going to release and you're going to get up the field and you're going to run out of bounds at three yards, okay? And so that route's going to happen pretty quickly. When you get to the bottom of the numbers, your job is to settle just like you're doing on the swing. All right. Let me 
drop another scenario here. Okay, again, that's base 92 for us. All right, if we want to get into changing up some of the things, we can run what we call 92 switch. Okay. And, and as well, you can run this thing as well as a tight end flexed out. We, we've, I've always felt like mesh was a little better with a tight end with his hand on the ground, but, but you can do the same thing. I do think it's important in my view that whoever is setting the mesh is the same guy. And what I mean by that, it could be a big tight end or it could be a small Y, but I don't think you want to get into your X setting the mesh, your Z setting the mesh, your H setting the mesh, all these different guys doing that. I just think there is an art in, in getting good at doing that and being physical enough to do it. All right. So if we run 92 switch here. Okay. So now all that happens is our X and our Z switch routes. Okay. So now. All right, X normally sets the mesh. So what he's going to do, he's going to have his seven yard split. So you're going to get a little bit of a bunch set here. Okay. So it's going to look, you know, you're going to have almost a little bit of a bunch set. Um, so now your Z so th these guys are going to switch routes. So now your Z is on the mesh. Your Y is setting the mesh. Your Z is coming underneath. Your X has the corner out. Your H has the shoot and your F has a swing. Okay, it's the same reads. Okay, going to read one, two, three, four to five there. Okay, that would be 92 switch. All right. One of the things if you've noticed through the years that I think has been particularly good in this play is when, um, and one of the things that we've done through the years is when we will call a glance post off of this. Okay. And so we would just call this 92 switch. All right. PCP, which used to mean post corner post. And we don't really run the post corner post anymore. We used to, to make it a different route. Now we just run a, a basically a glance post. So that would be a, a, a seven step quick post from your outside receiver. So again, quarterback would come back. He would read one glance post, two, three to mesh, four to shoot, five to swing. Okay, it doesn't change that. Then another tag that we would do off of that is we would sometimes run H wheel. Okay, so now it's tagging your H on a shoot wheel. Okay, and your reads stay exactly the same. You read post, mesh, wheel, to back check down. Okay, so that's 92 switch PCP H wheel. All right. So that has been a, a nice change up for us through the years as well. Okay. Let me get into a couple of different sets here. Some different ways to run this. Okay. So this, we'll do this out of a two by two flex. Okay. Again, alignment would be a seven yard split from your tackle with your X. All right. This would be that route or again, that route depending on off coverage or a hard corner. Set the mesh next with the mesh shoot there, swing there. Okay. Again, one of the things that we've done through the years would be post this, so this would be 92 PCP, F wheel. Okay, wheel that guy. All right, if you go and you look at Washington State, what Mike Leach is doing now, what 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 Mike believes, I think there's a lot of merit to this, is that wheel routes open the flats up more. So if you watch their guys, they almost always run a wheel out of that single set. Okay, or to that side away from the back, and he Mike has Mike has a belief that this clears out this flat player, whoever it is, this wheel route would clean that out and open this mesh route up a little bit more. Okay, so you've seen if you watch Washington State or you got their cut ups or whatever, you're going to see a lot of wheel routes from the running backs or from the slot receivers 
when they run mesh. And I think there's a real uh, benefit and I think it makes a lot of sense when they do that. Okay, another route I'll drop here real quick and, and talk to you a little bit about the idea of settling versus staying on the run. Okay, so So, right, so what you're going to get here, okay, a lot of times is this, is as that Y starts to run his mesh route, you're going to tell him again, he wants to be five yards over the ball, and then he's going to try to find the guy that he thinks is covering him. And if there's somebody chasing the X, then historically what we're going to tell the Y to do is just stay on the run. He'll set the mesh, and then he stays on the run. Now, what happens typically in man coverage is as you mesh, people will try to play underneath the mesh route, okay, because so many times you've dumped it down to these guys. So what happens is you get a linebacker that tries to play underneath the, the, the mesh route. So what we tell our guys is gain ground, and as you start to get to the hash, work up the field versus man coverage, okay, versus zone coverage. As soon as these linebackers start to widen out with the swing and with the shoot, that's the stretch you have to get with these guys, and that's going to create huge holes in here for the, for the guys to settle. Okay, And then that's where the settle and noose drill comes from, is these players have found zone coverage. They're settling. They have their back turned to the defense. The quarterback's going to throw them away from the nearest defender. They're going to turn that way and go straight upfield and finish the route. And that's a big part of the reason why – Again, this is this route has been so good to us is that our guys, when they catch the ball, you know, they may catch a five yard throw, but then they have an opportunity to catch and run and turn the turn it into more than just a five yard play. All right, so that's one of the adjustments that we do versus man coverage. Okay. Talk to you real quickly about one of the best third down plays that we've ever run that I think is a really good uh, play. Okay, this is 92, double seam. Okay, we used to laugh about this for years, is that, you know, when you go back and you look at the history of this play, very seldom is it, is it covered. I mean, guys are almost always open. Um, you know, we had a lot of success with it at Texas Tech through the years. Mike's had a ton of success with it at Washington State. You know, this is a play that, that Oklahoma runs a lot on third down. Uh, it's just been a really good play. So on double seam, what double seam is telling the, the running back, the H and the F, is both these guys are going to run vertical, okay? But they're going to take the top off the defense. They're going to run through the outside shoulder of the safeties, okay? Take the top off the defense. That's their job, okay? So then now Y is going to do the same thing he always does. We tell him you set the mesh, and on double seam, you don't settle until you get outside the hash. All right, so your job is don't settle until you get outside the hash. The X is doing the same thing. He is running his route off the Y like he always does. Again, if the Y is at six yards, the X is at five and a half. If the Y is at three, the X is at two and a half. They're going to be shoulder to shoulder. His job is don't settle until he gets outside the hash. Okay? Now, the Z is going to run a dig. Okay? He's going to have a slow release. He's going to let a lot of this stuff clear. He'll let the X go, he's going to let the H go, and then he's going to run a dig route right in between this at about 12 yards deep. Okay? And he almost wants to get into a trail off the, off the rear end of the H. Okay? That H takes that safety out. The, uh, the mesh stretches this undercover, and it leaves the middle of the field wide open. Okay? If you ask me what the read is for the quarterback, what we do is we tell him, and he's through, we throw it to everybody. It's, we really, this is where we want the ball to go, okay? But we're going to read dig to mesh, okay? And for whatever reason, historically, the quarterback's eyes go here to here, and then as, as this mesh, mesher starts to clear here, his eyes go all the way backside. And a lot of times this guy is uncovered, okay, wide open. All right. 
So again, you want to go dig to mesh late either side. Again, seeing some throws where this uh, this comes open late as well. Uh, you know, it's a route that takes some time to pass protect. You get asked all the time about protection. You better have good protection. If you can get good protection, uh, it's a route that's very seldom covered. And uh, as he runs his dig, all he's all the disease trying to do now is just find a throwing lane between the, between he and the quarterback. We've run it. You know, we tell them kind of you go, you go as deep as you need to go. Again, land the 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 way we teach it at the beginning is twelve yards. Sometimes ends up fifteen if it's third and twelve. Um, you know, so that when he steps back to the ball, he can catch the ball and be deep enough to get twelve yards if he needs it. It's basically a route where the Z gets gets deep deep enough as he has to, and then finds it throwing long. Uh, and again, it's a really good uh, third and long uh, route has historically uh, been good for us. So that's the kind of nutshells uh, of mesh. Okay, and again, it's uh, it's one of those plays that if you spend a lot of time on it. Uh, you can really be good at it, um, and I think it's one of those things that that you have to invest in. One thing I want to show you here before I wrap this up is this: is what what I like that we do quite a bit is we run what we call mesh drill. Okay, so we'll have three quarterbacks right here, okay, lined up together. Okay, then we'll have our wise, whether it's big wise, little wise whatever. Okay. We'll have these guys lined up here as well. So you might have your two or three tight ends here and your two or three inside receiver wise there. Okay. You got a line of your Z's here, you got a line of your X's here. Okay. And you have a coach standing here. Another coach standing here. And the job as coaches is to either, have, you know, be play man coverage or play zone coverage. So when the X comes across, it's man, the coach runs with the X, okay? If it's man coverage, the, the coach runs with the Y. Again, the Y sets the mesh, the X goes underneath the mesh. If it's man, remember they're going to get to the hash and start to work off the field. So we play underneath it. Quarterback throws the ball with air and leads the, that receiver up the field of the hash, okay? A great route, particularly in the red zone, if you're going to get man coverage, all right? Um, same thing going on over here. If you want to play zone coverage, then it, the coaches will just basically settle in a zone, okay, and widen out. Coaches here, coaches here. Okay, as so he comes across, this guy may widen. Now he settles right there. This guy may step in here, in which case he gets out here and settles. And so what you're doing is you're teaching your wide receivers to settle in the open zone, okay? Once they stick their toe in the ground now, they're going to settle. They're going to become a stationary target. They're going to give their numbers to the quarterback. And then again, those three quarterbacks that are dropping here are going to throw that corner out. You're working on that deep throw. And then you're working on the, the two mesh throws. Then you're going to throw it on the appropriate shoulder away from the nearest defender. He's going to catch the ball. And he's going to finish to the end zone, Okay. One thing that we do is, again, we put this mesh route on the 10-yard line to throw into the end zone. All right, it just helps us work on our timing throws. So that mesh is being set at about the five-yard line. The guys are catching the ball, and then we want them to finish to the end zone. Okay, we just call that 92 drill or mesh drill. Okay. To me, if you're going to run this play, you've got to run this drill. You got to spend some time, um, you know, showing all the different looks, investing in all the different reps, getting these guys to make a decision on the run while playing fast. Um, and again, I think this is something that that you know pays off if you'll invest the time in, in doing this on the on the mesh. Okay, so I'm going to get to a couple of questions real quick here. I think I've got five or six questions, and uh, I'll get to these and get them answered the best that I can. Yeah, okay, so uh, question one is, uh, is it possible to get footage of Perfect Drill in Pat and Go? Yes, just uh, email me uh, at the conclusion heel here. I will write my email address um, on here, and then 
just email me and then we'll send you uh, some, some video of, of us running Pat and Go, us running um, uh, Perfect Drill, and then also Mesh Drill that I just described. Okay, so if you're interested in that, I'll, again, I'll provide my email address and you can, um, uh, and you can um, just email me and I'll get it to you. It says, uh, do you call that an opposite or is it just a read route for the turn of the field? Um, I'm not sure how to answer. I'm seeing here. Hold on. Okay. Okay. I think I get it. All right. So, yeah. So, what they do is, yeah, when they turn up the field after they mesh, okay, so the Y, let's say the Y and the X mesh here, okay? Once those guys mesh, then if, if it's man coverage, then we want them to, to start to vary up the field, okay? Now, if it's zone coverage, they're just going to settle in the first zone that they see, okay, and give the quarterback their eyes. So, and the easiest way to do it is as you're coming to mesh, you're going to see if somebody's trailing the Y, somebody's running with them, and you're the X, you got a pretty good indication that that's man coverage. Okay, it's hard for you with your back turned and you running to see what your guy's doing. If he's following you, whatever, or if he's playing over the top of you, then it's easy to see. But, you know, you just try to get a read as quickly as you can by reading the defender that's covering, um, you know, the, the, the Y or the X. If you see him on the run, then that tells you a pretty good idea. It's man coverage. And then as I start to hit the hash, I want to veer up the field. And now as a quarterback, that ball wants to, I want to throw that ball with air on the upfield shoulder. Okay. And again, the reason why that's the case is typically people try to play underneath that mesh route. Okay. These linebackers will try to come and jump underneath the mesh. All right. I think that's the answer to that question. Hopefully. Aiming point for the Y, the mesh setter. Um, okay, five yards over the ball, but always underneath the linebackers, okay? The guys on the mesh can never go over the top of the linebackers. So if, that, if the linebackers walk down and those guys are three yards and that Y has to get three yards and that's as deep as he can get, then he has to go at three yards, and then the, the receiver that's meshing with him has to make the adjustment, whether it's the X or the Z. If it's 92 switch, it'll be the Z. If it's 92, it'll be the X. So whoever that is, they have to adjust off the Y, and the Y is adjusting off the linebackers. Have you ever done mesh with sail? No, we never have. We've never done um, We've never done that. You know, I think the, the mesh route for us has always been kind of a um, – um, a catch-all for us, a, good, a route that allowed, you know, if your quarterback is really good at throwing timing routes, like, for example, you know, this year, this route for us with, with, with James Prochet running that route and Shane Bouchelle throwing that, this was something that, that we were good at. And so this was a great way for us to be able to run that particular route and just make that throw. And if we wanted to throw an out versus cover three or versus man free to James, that was a really good play for us. And, and so mesh was a great way to get to that play. Um, you know, and then we had, we had, we were okay at this this year. I think it, we weren't where we quite needed to be, but we, uh, but we're going to get there. But as you, as you, as you, more you run this, the better you get at it. And just the more that you, commit the time to it, the, the better the guys are going to be able to adjust and the better, um, you know, the better the route's going to be. But it's a great way to throw a free access out route to a really good receiver if you have one. That's one of the things I like about this route so much. If you don't have that, then your eyes just go back down here. If you don't have this, don't like it, now your eyes just come back down to mesh here to swing to the back. And again, you get that triangle stretch that is good. I mean, that's the basic of all, the basis of all routes. You know, you get a, a vertical push and horizontal stretch, and it's it's, a, it's just a good good route concept uh, versus on coverage. Okay, get back to some questions here. Um, Daniel, appreciate the the uh, former player that came to watch us play Navy. 
Yeah, our guys played hard, made too many mistakes, felt like we should have won that game. Uh, you got to give Navy credit. Their quarterback was a hell of a player. And, you know, that, that's a game that we need to be able to win, though, if we want to become a championship pro- uh, program, which I think we can, and I think we're headed that way. Uh, what gives you most fits in the mesh concept? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, obviously, pass rush is the, is always the thing that gives you fits. Um, you know, I think that, uh, um, you know, linebackers that really are really physical and bang those crossers, I think historically have, have been the toughest thing. Um, you know, I can remember at Texas Tech way back when we played Alabama one year in the Cotton Bowl, um, and Alabama played man-free pretty much every snap in the game. I mean, they were really talented. And, you know, we thought going in we'll be able to throw a lot of mesh, and those linebackers were, number one, really fast, but number two, they just beat the hell out of our receivers as they were coming through the middle of the field. And uh, it was one of those plays we thought would be really good, and they they just, you know, they just banged us. Uh, And so that's always given – you know, giving guys fits is when those linebackers, when they see crossing routes and they really are physical and try to knock those guys down. You just don't see that a lot. You know, I've, I've always wondered why people don't, especially teams that run this a lot, why they don't try to bang um, those routes a little bit more than they do. But most people just don't do it. Uh, what's the benefit of mesh over shallow? Um, it's a good question. I mean, it's they're, they're similar plays. Uh, the thing that I've liked about mesh is you know, I always felt like to win on shallow, you had to be faster than the guy that you were running away from. You know what I mean? If you got, if you got man coverage and you were running shallow and they pressed you and, and you just couldn't run away from them, then I never felt like you had a chance. We're on mesh. If you're really good, if you got a great mesh setter and you got somebody who can get really tight to them and those guys are playing man coverage then you're going to get a lot of, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of collisions sometimes, and which is going to allow some guys to, to run free. And so that's, that's why I've liked it. I, I, I like the, 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 the throws to the backs as well, a little bit more than, than some of the shallow throws. You know, it's a little bit different what you're trying to do with the backs. I just like the, I like that, that immediate stretch that you get. Um, you know, if you look at, if you watch, you know, Mike Leach's teams, one of the things that they do a really good job of is in the red zone. You know, they run mesh, and this back is out of there, okay? And they'll read this a lot of times, just one, two, to three to the mesh coming here. And this ball gets checked down to the back a lot. Some people will play that kind of uh, red zone quarters. And when you can get the ball to the back really quickly like that, with his shoulders parallel, uh, squared up to the line of scrimmage, and, and getting the ball quickly, then that can be really difficult for uh, for defenses to tackle to tackle the back when he gets the ball that quickly. And Mike's always done a really good job of doing that. Um, and I, I just I like that that throw to the back more than I do some of the stuff to the backs out of uh, out of the shallow cross concept. Uh, yeah, three double cloud on third down, Lav. Man, it's uh, there's a lot of people. You know, anytime you're facing drop eight, there's just a lot of people in there. Um, you know, nothing's particularly good versus drop eight, but it does it does seem that especially if you've got a guy, especially if that Z <clears throat> is good at finding the zone, that he can figure out a way even versus five under to you know to to find enough room to settle. Um, and so I think that's again why you only want to have one guy that's running that that dig route on uh, on ninety two double seam because you want to have a guy that that, that you trust you know can't find a throwing lane he can't find a window and uh, you know most of the time it's hard to train three or four guys to do that if you can just find one one player that's good at making that decision on where to settle and, and where to find a throwing window then. You know, even even versus uh, five under, it, it can still be a pretty good play. Uh, what's the advantage about meshing outside wide receiver and wide? You know, the, the biggest advantage I think is just it's just it allows you to have more reps and fewer players. In other words, you know, if you're in a balanced set, your X is always your mesher and your Y is always setting the 
mesh. And I think that just the more reps that those guys get at doing that, as opposed to sometimes your H is meshing, sometimes your X is meshing, sometimes your Z is meshing, sometimes the H sets the mesh, sometimes the Y sets the mesh. You know, I just think that, that if you can find somebody who primarily sets the mesh and then one guy that most of the time adjust to the mesh setter, then I think you can invest enough reps where you can get good running the play. And I think that's part of the reason why the play has, as people have changed a little bit, the way that they play with their wide receivers and are a little bit more diversified in, in, in the way they align those guys than maybe we used to be. You know, for years, we just lined our tight end up on the right only. And he always set the mesh coming from the right. Um, you know, I think the more that you do that and the more reps you have into that, I think the better the play is. And I just think that uh, slapping hands just a practice thing or you, or you, do you encourage it during game? Just a practice thing, but it's funny. I've seen guys do it during games. Um, you know, I just think that they're just get accustomed to doing it and, and they end up doing it. Um, so, you know, we don't really tell them they have to in the games, but, but you know, the, the games simulate practice. And, and uh, so sometimes they, they've ended up doing that. Have you all experimented with mesh return? Yeah, you know, it's actually, we used to run some of the, some of the return stuff way back when. Um, we ran it back in 1997. It was a play we always put in. It's just something that we just, we felt like we were getting basically the same thing out of stick. Uh, because if you look at it and you look at the stick play, you know, you, uh, you let me show you, you kind of get the same action. Okay, because what we would do with stick is, again, you know, stick. Okay, you kind of get a little bit almost in a in versus man coverage where we run stick. We want it to almost look like mesh, and then we reverse pivot, and then we get a swing there. And so we felt like we could get to this concept um, without having to, uh, to rep another play. So we never did. We just felt like we wanted to get good at mesh. felt like it's, that was the thing about mesh that it kind of answered all the questions we wanted it to answer if we got good at it and invested enough time in it. And so we, uh, we, we didn't, we didn't really do that. Or we haven't much since then, you know, we, we messed around with it way back when and, uh, do your outside wide receivers flip with the Y? Yeah. I mean, what we're doing, um, we do. I mean, so we, we, there'll be times when the Y is the, the single receiver to the field. Uh, and then, and then obviously you can run your three by one mesh if he's your single to the right, let's say, and the other three are to the left. Um, you know, we, we flip our outside guys instead of our, um, or in other words, our X and our Z line up on the right and left all the time. Okay. And so our Y and our H is flipped. The old way we used to do it, the Y never changed sides. The Y and the X, the Y was always on the right, the X was always on the left. We started flipping the outside guys a little bit more. We can, you know, which means there are times when your Z has to set the route. You know, the best thing to do is just is to try to work it where, you know, you don't have to do that. Um, and, and you can run it out of a two-by-two two set all the time or out of a tight end set where he's, he's set that mesh. But I do think, again, you know, you want to have one guy that sets the mesh all the time if you can figure out a way to do it. Uh, on the double seam route, does the outside wide receiver leave line of scrimmage before the number three wide receivers are the way around? Yeah. So what happens typically is, is out of that alignment here, okay, which, again, this for us wouldn't be the Z. All right, this would be a little bit different. But anyway, I'm just going to show you. So – so what would the way in a perfect world, he goes first. Okay. He goes second and he goes third. So it's this, he buys a little time and then goes. Okay. And again, you almost want him to get in a hip position to your H where as he clears, he's coming off of his hip. Okay. Getting back to some questions here. Okay, quarterback footwork, so it's a, it's a three-step drop. So it's a, it's a three-step. If he has free access to that to, to throw the corner out or the out cut, then he's going to do it. If not, then now he'll shuffle up and he'll shuffle up in the pocket. His eyes will go to mesh to back, okay, or mesh to shoot route, okay? And so that's, 
that's that's the footwork. And again, it's a quick three drop, a timing throw to the outside. If he doesn't get it, he'll hitch up in the pocket. Eyes will come down, and then throw uh, the the lower horizontal stretch. Uh, yeah, I just talked about we don't really run return much anymore. Uh, just for us to kind of just run a stick. Does the running back uh, give a ball call in the swing? Yeah, we 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 have used that in the past where the running back will give a ball call. Uh, and again, especially in the red zone or especially on third down, um, you know, that's been something that, um, if the, if nobody goes with the back, he'll make a ball call. And again, that goes all the way back to the old days at Kentucky. Um, but it is something that, that, you know, the, the, the running back will make a ball call if he doesn't see anybody, uh, cover him. And again, you'll see that versus a lot of the, the, the red zone quarters, you know, the red zone quarters that people play, um, you know, or, or used to play a lot. Don't, don't as much anymore. Is the Z corner out usually to the field or the hash? And it does the hash affect the alignment of the foundation of the formation rather? Not really. So the, you know, we just tell the, and we line up in enough bunch set anyway, where, you know, it's our, our you know, you can't line. It's not always going to be mesh if our, if our splits are a little tighter. You know, we play with our splits a lot, wide receiver splits, you know, based on routes. And so, you know, I think for years we didn't really run a lot of other stuff except mesh, and it was probably a little bit of a tip. We felt like we were good enough where it didn't really matter. We felt like we could execute well enough. It didn't matter. But, um, but you know, like anything else, I mean, I think the more field you have for the, for the corner throw, the better that is. So, you know, I've always felt like that, if your quarterback has the arm strength to be able to make that throw, then, you know, making that throw to the field is better. Uh, I've always felt like that if you're in a flip set and the, you're going to run 92 switch, that the inside guy running the, 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 the true corner out was good versus a half safety just because he got a clean release on the half safety um, because he was aligned inside of the wide receiver. Um, you know, that I always felt like if you got a two, if we got a lot of cover two and our quarterback was, was good at making that corner throw versus cover two where we could leverage that safety pretty quickly. I always felt like that was a good, a good play. Um, and, and felt like that, you know, that was good to the field to line the two speed receivers to the field that way. Um, or if you're three by one to line them to the field, you know, felt like that the post wheel was better to the field. Um, you know, and it just makes more sense again to set your three to the field. Everybody's running a lot of FIB now, formation in the boundary, and, and doing things, playing with your splits, which I think is really good. And again, I think it's not as easy for people to pre-snap identify your running mesh now because people are constantly changing their alignments. Um, yeah, the question is, do we run spacing? We, we've played around with spacing a little bit um but the answer yes we, we ran spacing last year um you know i've always felt like that that spacing was almost quick game mesh in, in a weird sort of way um so yeah we we have it hasn't been something that we've majored in but i think it's a good concept and i think it makes sense and and especially with a lot of the fib stuff uh, i think that's a good way to set formation in the boundary and and throw to three speed receivers uh, into the boundary. So we, we've done it some. Um, heard you say six man pro, the running block uh, does the running block back block blitz. Yes. I mean, he's anytime, uh, anytime we're in this, depending on whether we're two back, we have a seven man protection. Both, both guys are checking their way out. We have some calls to, to alert the center and the running back, which back that we want to get out. In other words, if we're, in a, in a two back set and the first reads to the left, our preference would be to, for the H to have a, a free release. And so now the center would work to the left where the running back would work to the right. And we would be able to, to block up six in that situation. And, uh, and we could throw hot, uh, off of the, the running back if we wanted to, if we had seven man, uh, seven man blitz. So that's one thing that we've done, uh, through the years. So, if it's a six man protection, the running back will check his way out on the swing. And again, if it's a seven man protection, uh, we'll try to set the protection to where 
the center is working to the side of the quarterback's eyes. Uh, favorite vertical concept, um, you know, probably four verticals. Again, I think it's the, the best. I think four verts is the hardest to route in football to cover. Um, I think it's, um, you know, the most diversified because you can do a lot of different things off of it. You can make tags off of it. You can tag, um, you know, quick game throws off of four verts where you run the slants to outside guys with verts inside. Uh, what I like about verts is, you know, you can run comebacks on the outside. You can settle the stuff inside uh, versus zone coverage. Um, you know, I, I just think I like it. I like it versus man. I like being able to to single the backup on a linebacker. You know, I like the versatility of the of him running an option route uh, versus, you know, settling versus zone coverage and checking it down or, um, you know, or the different things you can do running a swing, uh, in, especially into three by one. Uh, Verticals. I mean, there's just a lot of different things that you can do, which I think is, is hard stuff to cover. So I've always felt like that, that, you know, that four verts was probably, you know, the most versatile pass play that you could run. Um, again, just because it gives your quarterback a lot of freedom. And I think it's something that, that we'll, we'll do a lot with Shane this year is, is get into some two by two, four vert stuff and, you know, let him do what he wants to with running back. Maybe you run an angle route, maybe run a swing. Um, you know, maybe run, uh, you know, the, the man out route that, that, that he'll run, um, you know, just all the different things that, that you can do with the back, especially with, with, you know, some of our backs are pretty good route runners and catch the ball well. Um, so I think it's a great concept. Like I said, I think it's kind of a catch all. And I think in a lot, in, in some ways, four verticals is, is kind of its own offense onto itself. So that's uh, kind of the basic mesh stuff. Again, I'm going to share my email address with you here. So that if you if you want some tape on perfect drill 